Harvard scientist Kit Parker has discovered a new way to spin nanotech fibers that could lead to a revival of the textile manufacturing industry in Massachusetts. And appropriately enough, his great eureka moment actually came at a New England County Fair when he decided to get some cotton candy. Heralded as a cross between a high-speed centrifuge and a cotton candy machine, a new technology being developed at Harvard can fabricate nanofibers better and faster than ever before. A long time ago, I saw someone using a cotton candy machine to spin out sugar, and then they would coat uh, it with uh, extracellular matrix protein, you know, like collagen, the kinds of things we always think about in terms of in skin. It occurred to me that rather than just putting the sugar in there, we could just put a polymer solution. If we want to spun it fast enough, and if we had the right chemistry, uh, we could make these nanofibers. Um, so for you know a couple of years, I tried to get people in my laboratory to work on this, and everyone thought it was too crazy to work on. So finally, I, I told my lab manager, I said, just go and buy a cotton candy machine, put it in the laboratory, and just play with it. So, so that, this thing is going like 12,000 miles an hour. Right? This thing is cranking. This new process could give a major boost for industry, with potential applications ranging from clothing to life-saving uses like artificial organs and tissue regeneration. So it occurred to me that maybe one of the things we need to do is start preparing to push manufacturing inside the body during a surgical procedure. So I figured we could start simple with this cotton candy light device and spin out these nanofibers. And the whole idea eventually is miniaturize this thing, shove it into someone's abdominal cavity through a, a laparoscopic surgical opening, and then weave whatever structure you need inside their abdominal cavity. So, so, so what, are you, more on what, are you, what are you using this for? What would you use this for? And when you say weave a structure inside someone's body, what are we repairing? Um, it, any type of organ that had been devastated because of injury or, or disease, uh, an organ that has some type of hollow chamber is the best. Um, you can imagine if you're weaving a uh, these nanofibers, you've ever pulled cotton candy out, and, you know, they stick it on that stick. You know, first they wrap it around. When you go to the fair, they wrap this, they take this little cardboard cone and they pick up the cotton candy like this. Uh, we want to weave it just the way it is inside that cotton candy machine, but we want to control the collector walls and move the rotor that's spitting out this jet up and down so you can weave these three-dimensional structures. Kind of like, you know, when you're doing pottery or something like this, except you're doing it from the inside. Now, are you using this uh, technology at all in relation to your work around building muscle? Yeah, sure. So that was one of the first things we did. If you've had a myocardial infarction, a portion of your heart has, has, has died. Um, we could do a ventricular patch where you take a piece of engineered cardiac tissue and you just patch over the dead tissue with a piece of live viable tissue that re re restores that pumping capability to your so heart. So give us a timeline. How long before you can go to your doctor and say, I think I need new muscle attached to my heart or my, or my stomach? You know, there's, there's several different techniques um, right now for, for doing this in my laboratory alone. We've got three different techniques for making these ventricular patches and translation is an issue. I mean, uh, obviously in these hard economic times, there's not as much venture capital out there. Uh, to translate these ideas out of the laboratory. If you're asking me to give you a timeline, I'm, I'm dodging out of the way on that. It's just a really thin layer. You stretch up the fibers are on the nanometer, hundreds of nanometers, so thinner than a human hair. But when we think about fibers, we think about creating cloths or sure. um, some, some other kind of products in addition to the kind of uh, medical products yeah. that you're talking about. Um, talk about any possibilities for using these nanofibers in more traditional ways. I mean, we, we were pretty focused on building scaffolds for tissue engineering, uh, but you know, only a moron wouldn't see the other applications of so making, making textiles. Uh, imagine making bed sheets with 25,000 fiber count, you know, thread count. Um, you can do all these kinds of things with nanofibers. Uh, so uh, we're, we're looking to exploit all the spin-off capabilities of this technology. Uh, and it might be that in the long run, tissue engineering is, is not the big tamale. Uh, making shirts or bed sheets or some type of other industrial textile is, is the big thing. And so, if we were to have someone who was interested, for example, in using this, yeah. this technology to weave fabrics, the, the sure. 2,500 thread count sheets you're talking yeah. about, and revive uh, manufacturing in Massachusetts, how soon could the, the technology be available to someone like that? This is really simple. So if you're talking about meeting industrial manufacturing, um, it might take a year or so to make these kinds of large devices to do that on a big scale. I mean, before you go to Target and buy your sheets, uh, there's, you have to be, this thing has to be you know, scaled up 
to beat mass production requirements. But it's um, possible. It's certainly possible. It's, it's, it's possible within the next 24 months. Uh, we could put one of these on a bench top in 18 months in most every laboratory. Uh, so you can make homemade nanofibers. I mean, it's not unreasonable that everybody could be a nanoscientist, that you make these gadgets and you buy one, take it home, and put it, uh, you know, if you can buy a cotton candy machine, it's roughly the same thing, except it goes a lot faster. Um, and what we're trying right now to dummy proof this technology so that anybody can use it. If I can use it, anyone can use it. So it's, it's sufficiently dummy proof now.